Hello, this is Tom Meeks, and this is 3D Design for Fun and Life, featuring moment of inspiration using the uniquely easy noun and verb method. This session is Project 6, Creating an M10 Screw and Nut. In this project, we will walk through the processes for creating an M10 cap screw and M10 nut to be printed with an FDM 3D printer. While the actual creation of the screw and nut is relatively simple, as you can see from the long list of items in the object browser, explaining the thinking behind the processes can take many steps. So, we have prepared the examples beforehand, and will simply walk through the steps in as orderly a manner as possible. As you can see, the steps are ordered using a letter prefix that helps us group the steps. In addition to the prefix letters, the numbering is a bit different than we usually use to better organize the presentation of the process. All of the entries beginning with the letter A have to do with the actual dimensions of an M10 screw and nut. Let's hide 100 and 200 and show A100, A101 and 1 and A102. These profiles reveal the three available thread styles for M10 screws. Each style is determined by the thread pitch. The pitch is the distance between each thread peak. From the left, we see that M10 screw threads can be extra fine with a pitch of 1 mm, fine with a pitch of 1.25 mm, and coarse having a thread pitch of 1.5 mm. We are going to print the coarse thread version. We'll hide the fine and extra fine profiles, leaving only A100. We'll show A111 so that we can see that the drawing represents the true dimensions of a manufactured M10 screw. We'll hide A100 and show 100. If we look closely, it's apparent that the finished screw design to be 3D printed is slightly smaller, horizontally, than the actual M10 specifications shown in blue. We will not have to make any adjustments to our design in the vertical direction. 3D printers are usually very accurate in replicating vertical dimensions. We'll hide the 100, the print version, to see the drawing of the actual specifications for the M10 screw and nut. Let's go over the important specifications of an M10 screw. The major diameter is the outside diameter of the threads. This is known as the crest of the threads. For an M10 screw, this needs to be 10 millimeters. The minor diameter is the inside diameter of the threads. This is known as the root of the threads. In the case of the coarse thread version, this is 8.05 millimeters. The angle of the thread wall is 30 degrees. And the pitch or distance between each crest for the coarse version is 1.5 millimeters. We'll show a 120. We will be using this profile that we will sweep along the helix rail to cut the threads. We used our original specification drawing to create this profile. The walls are 30 degree slopes on both sides. The shape takes into account the height of the foot of an M10 thread. And the outside wall extends past the width of the screw shaft. But this next requirement is very important. The outside walls should not extend so that the distance between the peaks equals the pitch. As the profile traces around the helix path, we do not want it to overlap. The maximum height of the outside wall must be less than the pitch. In this case, 1.48 millimeters. This will leave a small gap between each turn. In the end, we want our screw to conform to these exact specifications after being printed. However, because of the way most consumer 3D printers work, we need to allow for the fact that the nozzle on our 3D printer is 0.4 millimeters wide. As it follows a path horizontally, it lays down filament about 0.2 millimeters on either side of its path. This means that to achieve the 10 millimeters width, our path must be reduced by 0.2 millimeters. All of the 3D print dimension conversions must account for this behavior. We see this by showing item C101 in our list. All of our subsequent design work will be built on the red drawing if we want our printed 3D screw to equal the specifications of the blue drawing. Step number one, create the blank shaft for the screw threads. We'll show C121. 
We start by creating a blank shaft using center circle with the vertical option checked. The shaft will start below the top of the head of the screw. This is extruded to the top of the drawing as we see with item C120. It's helpful to chamfer the top of the screw shaft by one millimeter. Our goal is to cut threads into this shaft so that it looks like item C110. Step number two, create a helix with a pitch of 1.5 millimeters to function as a rail for a cutting profile that can be used to cut screw threads. We'll hide C110 and C120 to concentrate on building our helix. We first need a guide to help us build our helix. We'll show H101. Our helix should extend well beyond the end of the screw shaft. In this case, we want the helix to make 12 turns with a pitch of 1.5 millimeters. So, our guide is 18 millimeters long. And we want the width to equal the width of the crest. Click on the More Group button, then click on the Helix for a button. We will not use the tapered option. The prompt says, pick start of axis. We'll use the bottom left corner of our guide. The prompt says, pick end of axis, and we'll go up to the top left corner of the guide. The prompt changes to pick start radius, and we'll go to the bottom right corner of the guide. What we do next is determined by the thread type we want. In this case, we want to print the coarse thread version, and that means we must use a pitch of 1.5 millimeters. Notice that the number of turns becomes exactly 12, and the top of the helix ends at the top right corner of the guide. Step number three, create the cutter profile to sweep along the helix rail. Let's hide A111, so that we can see better how the cutter is designed. To create the threads, we will use a cutting tool created by sweeping a profile shape around the helix. Let's show H102. The M10 cutter profile frames. We used our original specification drawing to create this profile. We'll select the H102 and click on Construct. Then click on the sweep verb. We'll choose the helix as our rail and make sure to use the flat option and click Done. Our cutting tool is complete. Let's zoom in to see the gap between levels. The object we just created is exactly like item H400, so we'll delete it. We'll show C120, our blank screw shaft, and show H400, our helix cutting tool. We select C120 and then use Boolean diff with H400 to create our threads. We see this by hiding H400. Next, we'll prepare the cap screw head. Let's show C201, the 3D M10 screw head revolve frames. We revolve this curve to create C210, the 3D M10 screw head. Moving to the bottom view and showing C301, we see a hex polygon that will be used to create the solid C310 that we will use to cut the hole for the hex key slot as we see in the front view. We select the head and use Boolean diff to cut the hole using C310. Finally, we union the screw threads to the cap screw head and our M10 screw is complete. We now turn our attention to the creation of the M10 nut with coarse thread. In a perfect world, we would be able to create the nut threads by simply using Boolean diff and the screw. But the same 0.4 mm 3D printer nozzle factors that required us to offset our design creation apply to creating the nut as it did the screw. We must adjust the size of our screw threads if we are to use them to cut the threads of the nut using Boolean diff. We will show you a very quick way to use a copy of the 3D printed screw thread, which will be resized to cut threads into a nut. We will show Q200, which we have labeled M10 nut blank, quick.
We will also show C110, the finished screw shaft. We have copied it and labeled a copy Q110. We have repositioned the copy to be able to be used to create threads in Q200. To use Q110 to cut threads in Q200, we must first resize Q110 in both X and Y directions without changing any Z dimensions by selecting Q110 and clicking on the line that says Size. Uncheck Maintain Proportions and add 0.8 mm to the X dimension and then add 0.8 mm to the Y dimension. Then we can deselect everything by clicking in any empty space. Select the nut and click on Construct, Boolean Diff, and then click on Q110, the Quick Thread Cutter. The new blank M10 nut is now threaded and ready to print. But this quick method assumes you have already created a threaded M10 screw. We need a different method for creating the M10 nut threads if we do not have M10 screw threads already created. It's good to know both methods. Let's look at the real world dimensions of the M10 nut by showing A200, the M10 nut course profile. We use this profile to create a drawing that documents the dimensions of an M10 nut. We'll explore these dimensions by showing A201. But first, we'll hide A200. Like the process of creating screw threads, we use this drawing to create our thread cutter profile. This time, however, there are some differences that should be noticed. First, we will be working from inside the helix and pointing outward. Secondly, the back wall height is limited to 1.48 millimeters as before but it is extended toward the center of the nut to a length of 2 millimeters. Now, let's look at the dimensions we must use if the 3D printed nut is to conform to the real-world dimensions by showing N101. Both inside and outside dimensions have been offset by 0.2 millimeters, as indicated by the red drawing. We'll hide a 201. Show N111. and go to the bottom view. We extrude these frames to a height of eight millimeters to create a blank nut. We still need to refine the nut shape by cutting a slight contour around the top and bottom. We'll revolve the N121 curves to create N120 nut top slash bottom profile cutters. We will use Boolean diff with N120 to refine the nut shape. We'll hide N120 and N121 and show it in the 3D view. Since the nut we just created is the same as N110, we'll delete it and use N110 later. Let's return to the front view to create the thread cutter. We begin by showing our helix guide for the nut. We'll show N210. Next, we'll show N202, the profile we created from our original drawing, but now offset to the red drawing. We'll create our helix rail by clicking on Draw Curve. Then the more group and the helix verb. The prompt says, Pick Start of Axis, and we will click on the lower right corner of the guide. The prompt changes to Pick End of Axis, and we'll go to the top right corner of the guide. The prompt changes to Pick Start Radius and Anchor Point. We will do so by clicking on the lower left corner of the guide. We now set the pitch to 1.5 millimeters and click on Done. To create our thread cutter, we will select N202 and 10 nut cutter profile. We will sweep it along the new rail by clicking on Construct. Then sweep. Then select the rail. And remember, be sure to use the flat option. 
The resulting 3D object is exactly like N200, the helix nut cutter. So, we will delete it and show N200. To finalize the M10 nut, we show N110 and Boolean diff N200. Our M10 nut is now ready to be sent to a 3D printer. As we have seen, in Moment of Inspiration, there is almost always more than one way to create the objects we need. This is 3D Design for Fun and Life. 3D Design Courseware based on Moment of Inspiration by Tom Meeks. In this session, we created a metric M10 screw and demonstrated two ways to create an M10 nut. The techniques used in this lesson can be used to create screws and nuts of any size and length. This includes the large screw threads found on wooden handles for mops and dusters, giving us the ability to create special tools benefiting from a long reach. And that is very cool.